Welcome to our interdisciplinary teaching uh, workshop. Uh, Jason Bartson is in is from uh, philosophy, and Oliver Hennessy is from English, and we've been teaching uh, the Ideal Society for several years now. Wow, a long time. And so we thought we would share what we learned and what we think is doing uh, working and not working, and help you if you're going to do this to avoid some of the problems we did. And also joining us online, I think uh, Catherine Babor Mike is supposed to be here and I teach a course with her as well. So let's get started. Which would be uh, enter? No? You have to use little arrows down there. Put your <laughs> I'll put your cursor down here, like so here. Janice showed me before. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah. And I'm just, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, let me get rid of this real quick. So you can see most of it. Um, I thought I would give you just a regular uh, definition, and this is kind of how we run our class, I think. Um, it entails the use and integration of methods and frameworks from other, uh, from various dis disciplines to examine a theme or issue, question or topic. And of course, ours is uh, the ideal society, so we do it that way. Uh, next, we have. Just some quick definitions. Uh, this will be on the slides. There's cross-disciplinary, there's multidisciplinary, uh, various ways to deal with disciplines as you're teaching. But again, ours is to use different um, perspectives and looking at an individual topic there. So those are just basic definitions. And quickly, the benefits, we'll talk about that as well, but there's benefits to the students in terms of uh, developing competencies in different uh, areas, which is always helpful, and uh, understanding the, 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 how, those competent, how those different points of view can relate together and enrich your idea. Uh, some have argued that it helps develop creativity. Last, we showed our students this semester a student from last year, last year or two years, yeah. Uh, she, her final exam was to talk about what, uh, Ollie, what, what was well, the? Well, it was the, it was the, the term paper, right? The final right. paper, so she had to describe her ideal society and then justify her choices based upon the concepts that we've gone through in class, and then ultimately um, uh, uh, suggest a concrete step that could be taken to move our society in that direction. And she kind of jumped in, she, she incorporated uh, really um, the ideas of literature and created her own kind of utopian literature and then set the stage. So it was really interesting and it was very creative. Uh, develop their communication skills in different ways. Um, a lot of our students, when they're taking class, classes from me, say we don't really write a lot of papers and so it helps. And it fosters critical thinking because you're looking at maybe you have your own ideas there and you want to uh your your course the, what we do in our class is to give you as many perspectives as you can i mean jason deals with a lot of philosophers in various areas and it this was an interesting uh work and i have the the link uh, to it it challenges students perceptions about what science is i thought that was pretty interesting 
Uh, interesting <clears throat> article. All right, so now on to the fun stuff. Oh, yeah, this is fun, too. Uh, <laughs> these are three different ways of dealing with interdisciplinary teaching. One is called, is they use metaphors, and the metaphor is uh, pearls. You have uh, a, an idea running through the middle, and then you um, look at one way of looking at it, look at another discipline, look at another discipline, and go through the class. Um, we don't do that. Um, and then let me do, go to the third one. The third one is a snowflake, where generally what you do is you, um, it's problem-based. And so you'll get some students looking at it from one perspective, some students looking at another perspective, and then others. And you kind of, at the end of the semester, you have a bigger picture. But what we do is typically the zipper, where the elements are presented separately, but it's they're intertwined. Because one of the great things about this, this is my favorite class to teach, one of my favorite parts is when I can ask <laughs> Oliver about, you know, this particular literary, you know, story, and, and I can get my questions answered. Uh, and I can do the same with uh, Jason. We can, and this, and we model that for our students. And I think it helps them to try to tie things together. And so we'll say, remember uh, Mills, whatever it was, you know? Yeah, I can't. <laughs> top of my head. But uh, didn't what did you know? What did he say about this? And so we use kind of the zipper method where we do talk about other things but we're really tied in together with what we do. All right. Um, Tyra, um, you're just here for the best part. So yeah, the other just slides. So we're going to talk about why did you want to teach this course? And hopefully it'll, it'll help us, Jason. Sure. Um, well, I guess when we started this a few years ago, there was a big institutional push to have more interdisciplinary classes. Um, and uh, so there was some incentive to do it like that. But a lot of it just grew out of conversations that I would have with other faculty, including Holly and Mark, we would be discussing what we're doing in our own classes and seeing a lot of connections. And um, so since we enjoyed thinking about this stuff with each other, trying to integrate our own perspectives, you know, the thought was that would be uh, a good thing for the students as well, right? So uh, it was exciting to me to, I, partly because I wanted to, I mean, it's a little selfish, but I got to see other people teach, teaching style, and I get to sort of live with that for a while, and it gives me ideas, you know, so that's very helpful. <clears throat> but, it's also exciting to me to have my, the philosophical concepts and arguments, and so forth, um, being reacted to or engaged with from a very different disciplinary perspective. So that's just uh, exciting for me. And I mean, philosophy is about really developing a holistic picture of what all fits to, how it all fits together is important. And so by bringing the disciplines in, it sort of enhances the philosophical aspect as well. So um, I guess that's what that's what. Yeah, and it's made the, for me, it's made the philosophy kind of hands-on and connected to reality. When I took philosophy in uh, you know, undergrad, mm -hmm. it was mostly just this theoretical stuff. And this, I really like that. I I really wanted to teach this course. It was it was totally selfish. It was totally I wanted to teach with Ollie and I wanted to teach with Jason. I know they're really good teachers, and they they have different ways of teaching that I've learned a lot from. So it's been really helpful for me, and it's also helped me, you know, to to broaden the my theological. Uh, uh, what I expose my students. Yeah, you know, I just echo those things. Um, 
I would say that, you know, it's in the discipline of, of um, literary studies, or what English has become kind of shortened to. Um, it's, a, it's a discipline that's, that's kind of inherently uh, interdisciplinary. Um, because, you know, our, we have an object of study, which is works in literature and kind of the creative use of the English language. Um, but, you know, in analyzing works of literature, we draw upon philosophy and theology and history and, uh, you know, increasingly social sciences and even empirical sciences. So, um, for me, it was exciting from the get-go. It, it made sense because I was, you know, my, my training is in early modern literature, kind of the Shakespeare and the literature of the 1500s, early 1600s. And so, you know, this text, Utopia by Thomas More, was is, is really a big kind of important, significant work from that period. And I guess just in conversation with these guys, it started to, you know, I, again, it's, it's sort of selfish in the sense that I'm getting to understand these kind of humanist uh, texts from the 1500s better because I've got an expert on Reformation theology and, you know, an expert on philosophy, political philosophy, you know, in, in the case of this class. And so, so, you know, that was really exciting for me. And I do remember that we, when we, when we initiated this project, we had a, a mini grant from Kurgo to involve students. So we had like three students uh, helping us yeah. kind of conceptualize what we were going to do. But then it, what we do today is a long way from, from what we did then. But that was the starting point, right? Right. That seems like 20 years ago to me. <laughs> I've forgotten. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was right. probably seven or eight years ago. Yeah. So. Yeah. I'm waiting for the backlash on the chat about social science is not being empirical. Uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. What's the next question? Let's see. Uh, next question is. Uh, what is your approach to teaching an interdisciplinary course? What, how do we approach it? I've talked a little bit about it, but um, I think it's the. I mean, it took me a long time to figure out what interdisciplinary versus multidisciplinary was, and and I'm still not 100. percent That helps actually. Those definitions there helps, mm -hmm. but I think that the way I I didn't know really how to do it, so I just thought, well, we'll do multidisciplinary. You know. I was, we got a problem, maybe it's more like a snowflake too. We got an issue, and I'll look at it, I'll discuss it from a philosophical perspective, Mark discuss it from a theological perspective, Holly from a literature perspective, and I didn't know what else to do. I guess the hope was that that we would have, we set aside times for interdisciplinary discussion, where we would just, after presenting the philosophical component, the theological component, the literary component, we, spent, we went back to the big picture, which just had a general discussion where all those elements were were um, were involved. And I think going back to something that Mark said earlier, um, it really just came. It's really the modeling is really is really important. You know? So during these discussions, sometimes, especially at the beginning of the semester, students kind of wouldn't know. You know, maybe they'd be a little unsure about how this would go. Then they would see us try to figure the same thing out, right? Like, well, what is what is freedom really? What is like, what's the, it's the how should we negotiate conflict between individual liberty and sort of uh, and material equity? You know, how should we do that? And so we go back to these big questions. They would see us not as philosopher or theologian or literature, but just like guys who thought about this for a while, just like they had. Um, kind of trying to think it through for ourselves. So, and then, you know, I, I think we see students do that <clears throat> a little bit uh, as well as the semester goes on. Yeah, we, we've taken several approaches. I think early on we would take um, a look at the, actually a political philosophy book. We would look at items such as government governance, and we would talk about that. Uh, then we'd talk about uh, punishment and and talk about the various ways to look at that. I think we, tell me if I'm wrong, I think we kind of switch more toward um, taking a look at Thomas More's Utopia and then having them talk about the main 
uh, issues related to that and then work from there, right? Mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I think that's one thing I would stress is that this, our course has changed, but it's constantly changing. It changes every year and in response to our reflection, our experience in the classroom, and um, we tried we tried several different approaches to this, and I'm pretty happy with where we are now. But I think it will continue to to adapt. And um, you know, I would um, I mean, just some practical stuff. What we do now is we, we kind of rotate. We always have somebody who leads the class. So the three of us are in class all the time. We have a kind of designated week for each professor, for each discipline. Um, you know, we think about kind of alignment and how to kind of sequence the, the material in our syllabus prior to the beginning of the semester, but then we can always, you know, we're, we're flexible and make adjustments if we need to. But we always have a, a, a leader, and then the other two kind of act as students, which we are, you know. So I, I, the, the great thing about this experience for me is learning so much about their disciplines, right? And it's just really informed my, you know, my, my thinking of, about so much of, of what I do. And um, so, you know, let's say we have a class discussion, the, the, the faculty who's leading that day poses a question, breaks people up into groups, you know, we'll be amongst the students, we'll be part of those conversations, kind of answer the questions that have been set. And, and that goes back to that kind of modeling idea too. Um, but yeah, these days we kind of begin with Thomas More's Utopia, and what that does is just gives, you know, that, that's a, you know, if you haven't read it, it's a, 500 year old blueprint for a kind of supposedly ideal society that goes into a lot of detail from physical descriptions of laws to, you know, uh, uh, agricultural practices, family uh, arrangements, and so forth. And the great thing about that text is that it really challenges students immediately to engage with these ideas. And because there are things in it that you automatically are going to be very resistant to or even find abhorrent. And there are things in it that you're going to be, you know, find attractive. So, so we try to kind of read that right off the bat. So we just get all that material out there, all those questions. And then we begin kind of a more um, uh, methodical kind of step-by-step -step kind of scaffolding, building through specific questions and texts um, <laughs> to get ultimately to the, uh, the, that final paper. That when we tell our students, you know, this is what we're doing at the end of the semester. We want you guys to leave this class, um, not only being able to describe what you think would be an ideal society or, or a more just humane society, but also to, to, to justify your choices with kind of intellectual um, um, uh, claims. And, um, and then actually go out in the world and advocate for that. So, so everything is building kind of towards that final goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any Questions about how we do things? I have, I have a question. Yeah. Is this is getting too practical for this for this part? Just we can push it back a bit. But how does how does Xavier deal with it in terms of teaching mode? Like, so you turn on your philosophical. <laughs> yeah. What about the what what approach do you all take in terms of teaching mode? We've been uh, we were because the administration was encouraging it early on. Yeah. Uh, we were just given a full load for teaching the class. Okay. And so that's just part of each one of your teaching modes. Yeah. 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 And they continue to do that, which yeah. is don't post really, it. Yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty amazing. Because, yeah. uh But the thing about it is, the I probably work as harder on this yeah. class than I do others. Because we spend a lot of time, time no. after the semester and before the semester, and every once in a while we'll get together in somebody's house and have some beverages and talk about what's going on. But each, that's one of the things I really love about it is each semester, uh, these guys come up with better and better readings. Um, I have been really challenged to. Uh, look for readings that I think are uh, good, strong theological readings, but and, and address the issues that we need to address. Um, but the, it's, it's really difficult in my field to to find something about utopian ideals. You know? yeah. uh, but yeah, it's been a it's, that's been really fun. I mean, yeah. 
yeah. we've moved a lot of Oliver's moved a lot more toward um, Afrofuturism and uh, one of the videos that we watched um, explained that I don't you guys are too young for this but you'll know uh, George Clinton remember George Clinton and the Funkadelics yeah he was one of the early uh, Afrofuturism and I, so I got a a, a book written by him, and I'm looking at that now. And yeah. I'm looking for because it's a good area of research to for you know what is George Clinton's theological <laughs> bent? You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, not a lot cool. of people are doing that, so we're always finding new kinds of avenues. Yeah, I, I'm just sorry. I would, um, I would just add that um, uh, because these guys are going to be in class every time. I mean, we, you know, we, we grade all the papers together, we do all that work together, but because they're going to be in class at a time, it makes me step up my game. Mm -hmm. Because I know oh, yeah. I'm preparing to teach, oh, yeah. but it's, you know, I got to, I got to, you know, impress these guys as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, and one time, you know, you have one of those bad days and you just, you're bombing and nothing seems to work. And uh, one of these guys will save me. I remember one particular time that they, that I guess they just hadn't read anything. And it was terrible. And Ollie kept coming up with great questions and <laughs> and saved the day because uh, it was, you know, and that's one of the things that I've really enjoyed too. Oh, <laughs> <Full timing. laughs> yeah. I was going to add, since this is such a novel opportunity, have you done any um, pedagogical? Publications or presentations on. We were going to do one, right? Yeah. 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 Right, right. Um, we talked about it, and we, and we, we will. We should. Yeah, you should. You should. Because I, I'm just I'm thinking, you should. Because uh, so that's um, uh, there's a bunch of unique stuff, but I think being an HBCU, but I think also being three instead of two, like mm -hmm. they, yeah, I think that's yeah. And even at a upper level, like to so, yeah. yeah. When I was an undergrad, I went to an, on, on, an honors college at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, and they would have for the first two years, so your freshman year and sophomore year, you went to this interdisciplinary style, very similar to what you guys are. So there were six instead of three, and mm -hmm. it was several classes across your first semester, so that would count for your English, your history, your math, uh, or intro level science, um, and. The, like any of the humanities, basically, and the languages. Uh, you only had to then take your basic science or your basic math for extra core based stuff. Mm -hmm. But the first two years were alternating an English year and a science year. And so you'd have three scientists and three humanities. Right. Um, on the science year, you always had somebody that was either theological or um, somebody associated with faith and religion kind of thing. So to kind of balance out the science. Um, and in the, we had three permanent members and three rotating members. Huh. Um, and it was very similar to this, but you could only go on basics of developing papers and developing cross-cutting -cut ideas and introducing in a freshman to sophomore level. Mm -hmm. And your junior year, you went into more was interdisciplinary, sorry, not interdisciplinary, but um, cross-multidisciplinary. Mm -hmm. So one professor teaching you in something that looked across many disciplinaries. Mm -hmm. But you guys are getting to do that at the junior level so they know that they have acceptable writing skills, we know they have acceptable reading skills, we know they have acceptable basic foundation. And that's kind of neat that it doesn't happen as often as the And also, if I can share, share from the chat real quick, uh, Jay, Jay also teaches a um, class with an art professor, graphic arts artist. And um, he said that they also get the three hours. Uh, each get three hours to work alone, all of you have to be you're going to class every day, you know, doing the work. And then I hope our administration continues to understand that it's not you know, easier teaching. It can be really richer teaching and better teaching than not easier. So, yeah, it's one of those, I think, if you're in the same department, you only get the half load. It's yeah. not really cross. Yeah. Okay. That's um, what I was going to ask. Is it, is it an ex core, you know, situation? like? Or is it, but I think you're bringing up that if it's within the department, it's. Well, I think so. Let's start. Oh, I was just going to say that initially, we, we created this class prior to the X Corps. Mm -hmm. So initially, it was English, theology, and philosophy. And cross listed. You could cross listed, and you could take it as any one of those three disciplines, like what you're talking about. But then lately, we. 
kind of responding to the needs of Xavier for more kind of X-Core classes and so forth. And, you know, we, we, what we've done is we've kind of made this an X-Core class because it just kind of makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, just have that reaction. Now, if somebody needs three hours of English or philosophy to graduate or what have you, they can petition to come in mm -hmm. uh, and, and take care of that. But, uh, but yeah, we're, we're trying to go all X-Core. Yeah, the biggest obstacle to doing it the way that we started is the syllabus now has to be, you have to have all of the stuff for X Core, you've got to have all the stuff for theology, you've got to, and you've got to make sure you're doing all those. Now we're doing all of them, we've always done that, but just having it on the syllabus and evaluating it is, is kind of a pain. Whereas if it's X Core, X -core we're, it's a lot easier, so you've got to huge mm -hmm. syllabus otherwise, you know. Yeah. Mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> it, it might depend on the department as well in terms of the faculty load. Because I yeah. know that uh, one of my colleagues um, teaches a course with someone in uh, another department and the chair of that other department seems un unwilling or uh, mm -hmm. unhappy about giving them full load for that one thing. Uh, so I don't know what it depends on the department. There are a couple of the science departments that do <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so but uh but we were we were the, the chairs of the department, the department. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um wanna talk about the difficulties and this is this hasn't been as difficult in this class as it is in I teach a uh, Flannery O'Connor course with uh, Catherine Laborde, and one of the struggles that we've had is that students in that course are looking, who do I please? You know, who do I want? And, and because uh, Catherine and I openly disagree with about a lot of stuff, <laughs> and so it's like, who do I come down on? It's like, well, as you can, you can uh, as long as you can substantiate your argument, that's fine, you know. I'm, but yeah, that, and that's one of the things that I think is is really helpful in that class is that they do see professors who know what they're talking about in their own discipline, and then set up say, now this is, and sometimes it is a clash of disciplines, but uh, I think they, as long as you tell them up front and explain that the grading will be done by both, uh, you're okay. And that's what's wonderful about the classes I've taught is, you know, you hear these rumors around that certain departments are just really easy. I've, I've not found that. I don't, yeah. I don't think that uh, Jason or Ali or Catherine are, are easier graders than I am. And that was, that made me feel really good. You know, I didn't want to be the bad guy. Uh, and her ears must have been burning because Catherine just went mm -hmm. through the same. <laughs> That's one thing, you know. Um, I also teach, I also teach, teach another course with uh, David Lanoue from English. And, and this comes up a little more in that one than in this one. But there's the question of like, what's every discipline for? Right? So we're, we're doing one on like animal, on the human animal relationship. So some questions are like, you know, are do animals reason? Or, you know, there's all kinds of animals, but you know, say, take a cat. <clears throat> you know, does a cat reason? What does that look like? And then there'll be like a story of a, of a talking cat. <laughs> <laughs> the students will be like, well, look, according to the story, the cat's <laughs> very smart. You can let this guy make it up. You know? So, like, letting them know what the various disciplines are good for. And uh, Dr. Hennessy, Ali, has done a really good job of emphasizing. That when the literature is there really as a imagination prompt or an imagination enhancer facilitator, right? So you talk, do you talk about anthropomorphizing animals? Oh yeah, yeah. The book we have is uh is uh anthropomorphism and its discontent. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of it's like how a human is actually thinking about an animal, not actually how the animals thinking about it. Really right, cool. right. But the sad thing is, because this weird history of things, yeah. people want to give animals moral standing only by making them more like us. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. 
they need more. It makes heads. total sense. They, but it's to yeah. me, they deserve more control because they can't do their own. Mind. They can't. <laughs> <laughs> and some of them rely on us. They have. They, I mean, not all of them rely on us. Some of them are impacted negatively by us. But a lot of them actually, especially domesticated, rely on us mm -hmm. for survival. So they're morally and ethically yeah. Yeah, dependent, intertwined with their survival. Yeah, I just try to make mom and Terry fight in the class. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, one of the things, but, you know, just I, I do think it is important if you guys, for anyone who goes on to do this, I think one thing that I've learned is it is helpful to just tell the students. What you think the sort of the, the, the niche or the particular uh, you know uh, focus of each discipline uh, is to sort of let them know, okay, you know, theology is there to think about your deepest values and how they connect to the idea of the absolute and philosophy is there to sort of force you to clarify and articulate your positions and your reasons for holding them, and then to kind of put them on the witness stand and cross examine them and see if they stand up. And the you know, literature is there to to, uh, to push, which is really special, really helpful for this class, yeah. especially because it forces because you know there's this sort of status quo bias. It's so easy to think that things have to be the way they are. There's an inevitability to it, and you get the literature sort of like smacks that. Out. When, when students go to register, is only one instructor of record listed or are all your names listed? And the only reason I, I mention that is because when students are like, I don't know which X core to take. And I'm like, well, if you know who the professor is, then you right. kind of know their disciplinary angle based on their home department and their background. Mm -hmm. But if there's three people, right. and so that's why I'm just wondering, like, would a student see all three of your names when they go to register? Under the X core, yeah. I actually did that yesterday to kind of encourage uh, some faculty that are doing this already. And I just went down the course listings, and you would see two and three. And unfortunately, I have, I sent I included Jay in an email because I was going down the list. It was like, I know you've already got the email. Uh, sorry about that, Jay. Uh, but yeah, there, and I think for me, the biggest benefit for me is that students will, there, there's a, a, I think, a perception about what theology is all about. Um, and when they get to this course, and I hope that I've exploded those kind of expectations. You know, they they look at theology as some sort of you need to develop a moral compass. And, you know, it's like no, we're we're looking at you know separate issues. And then when we explain when we talk about sexuality or gender or anything like that, they're kind of shocked that um, from a that I'm not a, a Teaching a you know Catholic idea of something, I'm telling them these are different ways of looking at things. So it really helps me because I think a lot of folks are scared of theology and afraid their theology teacher's going to judge them. Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teacher instead of theology teacher. What's that? The Sunday school teacher instead of theology yeah, teacher. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It took me a while, even as a professor, to think of once I got that on my. You know, my first job, the way I had the LG department to not feel that way myself, so I can yeah. get some students. Yeah. yeah. You have always had weird interactions with me because I went to a Catholic high school, so I, and my mother was deeply religious, so I always went to elementary school and the age of having theology as one of those courses. But then it, the first instance of theology in college was actually when I came from science here, and we had a priest as the theology. And it was interesting to watch him because the, the topic was origins. So that meant origins of life, origins of the earth, origins of thought, origins of belief. And you could basically do anything under the topic. So it was really interesting to watch him interact with the astrophysicist that was also on mm -hmm. how they would interact in play. Yeah. And the focus then of breaking that thought that theology is just yeah. religion only, it's actually a branch of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. This is in a different way. Where did you go to school that had that University of Alabama Birmingham? And so they had oh it was the honors college. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I taught a few classes at UAB. Like I was I'm a uh, UA grad. 
Um, other challenges, I mean, COVID has <laughs> <laughs> really all the things to go with COVID, and doing this on Zoom. Oh, yeah. Hard. Um, oh, okay. Just you don't have the same, you can't gauge the, uh, the level of engagement, the students um, use body language and all that stuff everybody's uh, dealing with. It's been yeah. a challenge. Uh, Dr. Barson had uh, COVID early, so we didn't meet until last week. Yeah, we're in our second week face to face. Yeah, and so I was up, it was, I was up the first day and I was scared to death because you know the Zooms had not gone that well and they was just so anxious to talk. It was a great class. We didn't cover a lot of material, but they seemed to be getting a lot of stuff off their chest. It was, it was helpful. I guess that's a good question. Like how in your first iteration of, of preparing for this did you have too much and have to scale back like you mentioned? You didn't, you know, it was a great class, didn't cover a lot of material. When you have a discipline specific course, you know, it's like these are the specific learning objectives. But when you can kind of design think the class the way you want, like how do you know, oh snap, is it just like, hey, we just keep teaching it and we just keep? Well, we're pretty flexible. I mean, Jason had. Uh, this article that he said we'd only need to read the first eight pages of it. And I, oh, come on, Jason. And I read it, and it took me a while to get through those eight pages. And so he just moved things back. Uh, so we, we that's one of the great things is we're, we're pretty good on the fly of saying, hey, man, I'm going to need next week because this went longer. And so we're very adaptable, which is great. And it's Pretty amazing since you have three different personalities and three different. You know, it really forces you to think about what, which I guess is a, we always for a question to ask, like what is essential to improve? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, because you've got fewer days, right? So I, I rue the fact that I assigned this one article because I realized I could have gotten a lot of the same mileage done from both the students going yeah. past, right? Yeah. So you know, you definitely have to pair. Things down. I miss. We used to read a lot more. You told me the story. Yeah. You know, your yeah. And um, so uh, you know, there's always more. Certainly, there's more philosophy, there's more theology, there's more. But it just forces us to make uh, sometimes painful choices. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that can be that process is a creative one. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, yeah, initially, at least from from the literature perspective, there's just so much possibility. Uh, for this topic, I mean, you have the entire utopian literary tradition, then in the 20th century kind of flowers into dystopia and speculative fiction and so on and so forth. I mean, you know, there was a time when I was really, I had that mindset of this is what students need to know, just they just need to read this, right? Because everybody should, every educated person should read it. Mm -hmm. And I, I've dispensed with that. I mean, there are there are, I think for this course, we have to read Thomas More's Utopia, that's the original, you know, that's that's kind of the, the urtext for the, for the genre, but um, but now I see certainly the literary role, of, the, the literary part of this class is doing something different, and it's, not, it's less a kind of miniature canon within this genre, and right. more a kind of functional uh, approach, you know, so, so we're focusing more this, this year, last year, on kind of Afrofuturist stories, which really kind of, um, you know, engage our students and, and, and kind of compel them to um, to look into the future and, and to um, to kind of open up creatively to other possibilities or social arrangements. So, so I've gone from that kind of yeah, a sort of slightly canonical approach to a more instrumental approach. And I think that process has been organic and it's been trial and error. And we've taught the class so many times that that's kind of what we got to. And, and you know, and, and I think the class is much more interdisciplinary in that sense now than, yeah. than it was. And I, I don't know. I, I, I think it for me it's more fun. I, I like the uh, you know the new stories that we're hearing or you know on your side, and I like the fact that the the Philosophical ideas are not as structured. There's just more of a. This is need to know her. Yeah. 
part with, hey, this applies to the map. Yeah, yeah, and it's really good. So I, it's, it's a whole lot of fun. I have a question. So in this, you guys have an interdisciplinary style so of courses, multiple disciplines together. And all right, so I, I teach at a freshman level, obviously, that you can't do just virtual or freshman. Um, but because I'm a science, I'm a history of history. And I came from a background of seeing cross disciplinary and interdisciplinary and loved it. Um, but in designing a 3000 level, I have an interesting idea. And right now it's developed kind of as multidisciplinary and cross disciplinary. It's just me. But how do you actually make those connections to inspire something like a cross disciplinary or move a multidisciplinary or, or cross disciplinary into interdisciplinary? Um, engage with other departments that either are best suited or could add a new spin to it? I think you gotta find them. Yeah. Find the right, it's a relationship thing, I'd say. Right. Right. The evidence must be all over that, right? Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. It depends more on the relationship and stuff like that. Right. There, there are, um, you know, I've talked with Elizabeth, with Dr. Holman, with others, and, you know, it's, it's about, a, you know, find somebody that's, uh, your personality is kind of similar, mm -hmm. um, and that you, you don't have one who's really, you know, stuck with that syllabus, and you just have to find, and, Find somebody that, uh, that you're, you talk about something that's semi-related to that, and, and see how it, it can come together. But that's it's really hard. I mean, that I I just did yeah. this because I like these guys, and I knew I'd be able to teach with them really well. Yeah, I think um, if you don't mind if I add, because I've taught in taught here and at Loyola when I, when I was previously, and mm. I think just finding a good partner. I'm not sure I would, I would say that it's got to be similar personalities because that. Can be good for students to see, you know, differences and things. It, but it's got to be somebody you feel excited about working with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. you, you want to enjoy it. <laughs> you know, you have similar it. teaching styles. Right. You know, right. You're right. It doesn't have to be similar personality. Yeah. But, yeah. But, but, but yeah, but you've got to enjoy it. You know what I mean? Otherwise, yes. it's inauthentic or in your home. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, some, there's so many cool ones, right? There's. Robin and Holman's the devil. The devil yeah. is sacred. Spirituality is sacred. Yeah. And then I know in chemistry, I'm so impressed by um, what do I got her name right now? Yeah. With the food, chemistry and the food. Oh, uh, Sarah. Right. The we. Um, Sarah does the paint, and uh, Chloe does the um the food. The food. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Oh, and I was saying that Robin and Peter Martinet did yeah. something of very. Well, that was more of like a science humanities crossover. Yeah. And that was, and it would change the topic, right? Like water, right? You know, how much water yeah. there is, stuff like that. Yeah. So maybe there's someone to talk to uh, from, you know, from science, from other perspectives, how they do it. They seem yeah. to be enjoying yeah. it very well. <clears throat> and I mean, the, the topic that I'm trying to design for 3000 is a um, medical research one. So mm -hmm. basically, those that have been harmed, like the history of it, those that have been harmed by it. What did go wrong, and can we develop an informed consent? I'm coming at it from a research point of view of here's actually how they went about it, here's how we need to then change that so that we can number one can change populations that have been harmed by this so that they can safely be represented and not harmed by future being removed from the studies. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And that, so that comes from my science background, but there's a lot of interesting implications on history and Psychology, Psychology you know, yeah, interact yeah. With students, like the, the people that have been harmed, and what has happened, not just physically to some people, but psychologically to some people. Yeah. And blow back, but then also the philosophy behind it. So it's kind of like it's one of these very interdisciplinary, like potentially yeah. interdisciplinary, but I've only been able to develop as a multidisciplinary because it's just me on my own right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I would, I would uh, boost my colleague over here and say that I think. From my experience, philosophy is the best discipline to mix with kind of anything. Uh, that you're like you've in. taught health eth ethics? Yeah, sure. And so, yeah. Oh, there's a lot, there's a lot there, yeah, for yeah. sure. 
But yeah, I was like when you were talking about something just like from the psychological point of view, you know, I teach the entire and I still have got to connect about mm -hmm. our, we, we teach so much the same thing. But um I teach health science, so we do a whole section on medical mistrust and how does that play out? Yeah. yeah. Interesting. But that's it. So what do um, you start coming to the cats can start having social hours next week? Mm -hmm. Come to the cats social hours, talk to the colleagues, and then you'll find those connections. You yeah. Know. That's yep. what it kind of seems like this grew out of actually a yeah. personal friendship oh, course yeah. and talking and chatting and being like, oh, this would be really cool to do together. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. COVID and <laughs> we're also like on opposite ends like, on at least campus, yeah. on campus so yeah. sometimes it is a little harder. Yeah, it was funny because they told us that we were moving into one location so that we could work uh, the humanities so we could work closely together. And we already had our our course already had one with Catherine. Home and had one with Saw. I was like, we don't need to be in the same building. Yeah. You know, I think Elizabeth's right because, like, I think thinking back, how did we become friends? Or how did we become, you know, interested in what each other was doing? And probably came out of the cat social events and then the, the kind of campus wide social yeah. events when they used to do happy hours. Yeah. 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 And um, yeah. that's a very Yeah. Did you have a collaboration? Huh? It's, it's something that just dawned on me. Um, is is like lower. What could be lower hanging fruit? Because I know in the sciences classes are way bigger. <laughs> um, also, this is just different thing. But how cool would it be to have like an X Core thirty ten or X Core thirty twenty that was more like a seminar where you have these blocks where you know. Two professors that have chemistry, um, but you know, have some similarity. They maybe have like a block within that course, and then so that it's not really like such a heavy lift. But I think it would be really dope. But like trying to get it organized just seemed like a nightmare. But at least I, you know, it flowered in my head and I shared it. So well, I think we're we're. Uh, there's a big demand for X core courses, you know. Uh, yeah, so I think that's where there, there'd be some flexibility. I, yeah. I, I mean, you could even do that on the, the freshman level one. If you could find a way that, like, basically, I mean, all of these are personally designed, but a lot of them, especially like the New Orleans one or the social justice ones, if we're rotating professors through each of them, they're getting a little bit of spice from every different. Yeah. Yeah. Area. I mean, like, there's a lot of different, like, English professors, teachers, chemistry professors, philosophy, and all of them are different, but they all design kind of and intermingle with each other sometimes. But Jay just put in the chat that he confirmed, yes, there's a big meeting for all X courses. <laughs> all levels, all courses. Yeah. So that's the right, you know, it's cool to have the, the three professors there. I know pharmacy, they rotate, like, that is just how they operate. They want to take yeah. um, professors teach different blocks of content, but I just think it it will be it will that's be a little bit yeah. I was gonna, gonna say more like, about like pro, like we're teaching the same mm -hmm. course, but I teach this, you teach that, right, and right. like there might be continuum, but mm -hmm. not that whole cross yeah. off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's what seems to be interesting. Yeah, this yeah exactly. really allows for that cross off. Right. Yeah, and, and also I would say that. Um, If anybody out there wanted to teach another section of this class, I think that would be fantastic. I mean, yeah. the way it's designed, it's the R3 disciplines, but there's no reason why other folks in our departments right. couldn't teach another section on there. Right. It's presumably the same with other. Develop. Yeah. How large are your classes? <clears throat> 25, you know, I guess they bump up now. It's about 30, I think, about 30. Yeah. But that's because of the shortage. Um, you know the other the other uh, repay a favor who to take the department. My other class is also in English, so that's kind of easy, not easy to sort of logical. Like because they because they wrote about it, you know, just because they have great literature on medical research. Yeah, yeah. 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 so much great stuff. Yeah, and and it's crazy yeah, like as well. Like anything where you're looking at basic values can can be um, fitted and slotted in almost anything. I do have another, another question for you all. Uh, this is related. Uh, this is related. 
But I'm just wondering because you know I've been doing a lot of reading about um, uh, inclusive pedagogy and anti-racist pedagogy and this sort of thing. And I know that you mentioned some of them, Afrofuturistic, I think that's the term you used. But I just wonder, is three white men teaching the class, do you acknowledge that at the, the front end? How and how in terms of like the team teaching? Well, I mean, yes and yes. Um, <laughs> and especially when we're dealing with topics where, you know, with white men. So the topics about gender, race, and so forth, obviously are, are coming up a lot and with the content of this class. Um, you know, I, I will say things like, you know, I understand that as a white European uh, male, in my case, um, that my perception on this issue is limited to my experience, uh, et cetera, et cetera, and, and I'll really kind of foreground that and kind of make it part of the conversation. And then I think Jason might be able to give a good example from our class yesterday, actually. Oh, yeah. So um, we're teaching a book. Or this semester, the philosophy we're focusing on a book by Tommy Shelby, a um, uh, philosopher from Harvard. And he, it's called Dark Ghettos uh, Injustice, Dissent, and Reform. And it's basically just trying to um, look at, uh, so it takes the idea that the existence of these areas is just evidence of not just dysfunction, but of injustice, right? So. So it kind of develops a theory of justice to show that, and then uh, tackles um, specific issues, right? Like some people want to uh, respond to these problems with integration, right? Of course, there's new integrations, right? Or, uh, you know, how to deal with the criminal justice system, stuff like that. So, um, well, I guess first of all, so the fact that I chose this book is already mm -hmm. just showing that I'm moving I'm teaching so much of the same stuff about anyway, but now it's in this context that is more, I think, relevant to them and to everyone now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really, so that's good. Um, but then, yeah, l l last time I, we started the class, I, I sang, um, okay, there it is. Yeah. That's saying, uh, mm -hmm. like, I don't know about this word, you know, coming out of my mouth. <laughs> right. So uh, it doesn't feel right to me when I say it, it's like the word. Oh, you kind of like racialized now and just don't really feel comfortable with it, right? So I said, you know, what are your, I want to hear, what do you guys think about this? You know, and I don't want to, mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, so hmm. let them talk about it for a minute. And um, they basically, they said, you can't use it as an adjective. <laughs> I said, that's out of question. We don't want to hear you say, hear the word, you know, by the way. And, but they said as a neighborhood or as a term for an area, the consensus seemed to be, and you know, you don't know if it felt this way, I was sort of trying to I encourage them to reach out to you privately to your point publicly. But uh, then in an academic context, they seem to just not mind at all. They're like, no, that's fine. Maybe there's already some trust built up. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't know. But it is a little, it is a little, I mean, the class is called the ideal society. Right, and it's three, three white, you know, cis head white men. Yeah, so, that's publishable. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was thinking it, Elizabeth. I was thinking that. No, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, oh. it's it's pretty <laughs> obvious. Yeah. <laughs> we we introduce ourselves. Or I think I think, I think it, what makes it a lot better is what Ali said: is that we're all aware of and yeah. acknowledge yeah. our epistemic limitations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I did that when I was uh, a graduate assistant teaching at UGA. <laughs> I would be like, oh, I'm also black. In case you were wondering, <laughs> how I identify. It was like get nervous after. I'm like, we talk about health disparities. I don't have so much agenda to make me feel bad. The stats are the stats. Yeah. So, you know, just let me know how you're. How you're your feeling, but I remember there was a, a awkward moment where a student, he and he, he kind of had like this arrogance because he didn't always like come to class. So, like when he was there, he just for demeanor was just like I was a you know tender little class lady. And I was just like, but race is a biological construct, and, da, 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 da. and I was just like, oh, I'm oh. your personal feelings. Yeah. <laughs> I'm your personal feelings. 
And I'm like, I love this question. Would you like to stay further after class <laughs> to discuss, you know, versus you know, books to read, you know, <laughs> genetics versus social construct? Blah, 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 blah. And it's like the class was looking like this is so awkward. <laughs> so awkward. So I mean, the best way is, you know, when you're introducing this, like, let's just stay the audience. <laughs> so, so uh, absolutely, and just putting it out there and. So much of it, particularly in a discussion-based class, is about trust. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that we kind of work on beginning of the semester really establishing that. A lot of our students will come to take this class, they've already taken the class by one of us. Mm -hmm. So there's a certain trust level there kind of built in. But um, and that's actually been, I think, um, one of the disadvantages of COVID and Zoom teaching is you, it's harder to do that. Right. Yeah. You know. um, I'm wrapping this up. I'm All right. Sorry, uh, but I'm keeping out of time. Um, everyone, oh my goodness, what a stimulating, stimulating discussion. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for taking the time. Mark, thanks for getting together. Presenters, thank you. But thanks, everybody, uh, for giving the time to do this. Um, I think our next thing is our social hour on Tuesday. So be on the lookout for Mark's email about that. And y'all come drink some wine here. We're going to put social, we're going to uh, teach Jason how to wear a mask. And then we're going to see uh, like social media stuff, uh, social media, COVID restriction stuff in place. So don't worry. Don't worry. All right? Bye. Thanks. Bye. Sorry. I had to say that too. Sorry, Jason. I, I, I love you. Uh, it's all right. Maybe we should be done with you next week after.